Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. I'm currently in the process of catching up with my distribution reviews, and that effort brings me today to Kubuntu 2104. That's going to be the subject of today's video. And Kubuntu, in general, has been a distribution that fans of the Plasma desktop have enjoyed using for quite some time now. In fact, Kubuntu was one of, if not the first ever, spins of Ubuntu. A spin of Ubuntu is essentially Ubuntu's base, but with a different desktop environment. And Kubuntu has existed for quite a long time. In today's video, we're going to check out the latest release of Kubuntu, 21.04, which features the Plasma 5.21 desktop environment. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all of the popular distributions such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that allows you to tell all your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You can use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the chosen platform that's used to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. And Linode offers 24 by 7, 365 support regardless of plan size, so you can get live help from a real person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 in credit towards a new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And thank you to Linode for your continued sponsorship of Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get into my review of Kubuntu 2104. First of all, let's talk about the installation process. Kubuntu features the same workflow as the majority of distributions nowadays when you go to install them, which means you are provided with a live environment that you can use to demo the distribution before you commit to an installation. And after you've had a chance to test it out, you can launch the installer at any time and get it installed. The installation process itself is fairly straightforward. It'll ask you questions, you answer those questions, you move on to the next section, and then repeat. One thing that I found interesting is that Kubuntu doesn't use a rebranded Ubuntu installer like most flavors of Ubuntu use. They have a sort of front end on top of the installer, and I'm not sure why that is. It seems like a lot of unnecessary extra work to me, but who knows. Regardless, the installer works fine, and it gets the job done. At the end of the day, we can't really ask for more than that. And here's Kubuntu 2104 running on my first generation ThinkPad X1 Extreme. For those of you that aren't already aware, I always try to use real hardware for my reviews whenever possible. So yes, this is installed directly on my laptop. There's no VMs or anything like that. So you're going to see exactly what the experience is like for me on my actual hardware. Kubuntu 2104 features the latest Plasma desktop, currently version 5.21. And in my opinion, it's a very bare-bones experience, but that might not be a bad thing depending on how you look at it. So we have your standard set of utilities here, so we have a file manager. Dolphin has been the default file manager for the Plasma desktop for as long as I can remember. And it's actually one of my favorites. Just like with the rest of the applications that Plasma provides, you have no shortage of customization options. And I'm not just talking about simply changing the view layout, but as you can see, you could certainly do that. There's all kinds of different tweaks and settings that you can customize in the Dolphin File Manager. And that's the same as other KDE Plasma apps. One of the things that people really enjoy about Plasma is the fact that you can customize pretty much whatever you want. Now, I'm not going to go over every single setting here. You get the idea. Dolphin is a solid file manager. It's one of my favorites. It looks great, has all the features that you could ever want, and you know what? That's about as good as it gets. 
For the default browser, we have Firefox. No big surprise there. And there are actually browsers that are based on the Qt toolkit, which is what the Plasma desktop uses. Firefox actually uses GTK, which means it's more of a GNOME app. And I find that there's a lot of turnaround when it comes to Plasma-based web browsers, so I'm not really sure if that's why they decided to go with Firefox. But either way, I think it was a good decision. Firefox is a great browser. It's my favorite browser. But as always, if you don't like Firefox, you can certainly install something else. Now, I'm not really sure why it's asking me to make it the default browser when it is the default browser, or at least it should be. We had an icon for it right here, so I'm not sure if the Make Default button being present here is an oversight with the Kubuntu developers, if there's something they forgot to tweak, but it really doesn't matter because it does work. But I'll just go ahead and click the Make Default button just in case there's any edge case that would require that. But anyway, Firefox is the default browser. No surprise there. And then when it comes to installing new applications, we have this utility right here, which is simply called Discover. So if you want to add new applications to your Kubuntu installation, this is how you do it. And it's also how you install upgrades as well. As you can see here, I have quite a few updates to install. So that's something I should take care of off camera. But in regards to installing new applications, it's fairly straightforward. You just choose a category here on the left. And then once you find an application that you want to install, I'll just install this one. Type in your password. And that's essentially all there is to it. You also have a section here for applications that you have already installed in case you want to remove something or clean up your installation a bit. So in one utility, you can install new applications, manage existing ones, and also install your updates as well. And it's a simple application to use, in my opinion. I don't think anyone is going to struggle with this at all. It has a simple, easy to use interface. It's fairly self-explanatory. So I definitely like Discover. I think it's a good solution for package management. And what we could do is just go ahead and take a look and see if that app is installed, and it is. I installed GIMP. Here it is right here. It's in my application menu. So you simply install an application. It appears in your menu and it can't get any simpler than that. Now, while we're here, this particular app launcher is new with Plasma 5.21 and it has your categories here on the left. And then anytime you hover over a category, then you'll see what's inside the category on the right. Now this application launcher reminds me a lot of the Cinnamon app launcher, but it really doesn't matter. I think it's fine. And you can actually go back to the old style of launching applications in the Plasma desktop. The kickoff launcher is still available, so you can simply remove the existing one and then replace it with kickoff if you prefer the old way. And speaking of that, one of the things that people seem to love about Plasma it's just how customizable it actually is. So if you right click on the panel here, you can actually edit the panel. So you could change the size, you can make it larger or smaller. And then you could also add widgets to the panel as well. And one example is the Bluetooth manager that we have right here. So if you think that you might ever pair a Bluetooth device to your computer, you might wanna add this one. So I'm going to drag it onto the panel. And now I have a dedicated menu for Bluetooth devices. And something that I also find very interesting about Plasma is that it'll let you do whatever you want to do, even if it's a little weird. So for example, what if I wanted to add this Bluetooth menu to the desktop? It let me do it. And it might be a little odd to always see your Bluetooth devices on your desktop, but what you could do is add all kinds of widgets to your desktop, and each one gives you visibility into different things about your system. So you could actually make your desktop a command and control center for all the things on your computer, because you can add whatever you want to the desktop. You can even add an application launcher to the desktop as well, if you'd like. And that's a little strange looking in my opinion, but then again, Plasma will let you do whatever you want to do even if it's a little strange. 
Now, removing these widgets is fairly easy as well. I just hover over it. You can hit the trash icon here. And then it's gone. So you could customize the desktop any way you'd like. It's literally one of the most customizable desktop environments of all. So if you're the type of person that really enjoys tweaking your desktop environment and making it yours, if you haven't already tried the Plasma desktop, you're going to love it. And that customization is one of many reasons why a lot of people love the Plasma desktop. You can make it yours. And Kubuntu features Plasma as a first-class citizen. That's the entire point of Kubuntu, after all, to give you the latest Plasma experience. And Kubuntu 2104 does exactly that. But the only downside that I can see here is that there's nothing stand out about Kubuntu at all. There's no Kubuntu specific features here. They give you Plasma and that's about it. But that might not be a bad thing though. If you want a vanilla default Plasma experience, then you'll get that in Kubuntu. I know that there's a certain portion of my audience that actually enjoys having Plasma without any distribution specific changes. So if that's you, you'll especially love Kubuntu. And Kubuntu features a very top-notch implementation and integration of Plasma. So I can certainly understand that despite the fact that it doesn't really have anything that makes it stand out from other distributions that also feature Plasma, it's a great fit for those of you that just want the latest Plasma experience on the latest Ubuntu base. But considering that Kubuntu gives you a newer version of Plasma in every release, then that means that we can automatically take advantage of any new features that are introduced in Plasma itself anytime we upgrade our installation of Kubuntu. And one thing that is new here that I'd like to highlight is the new system monitor. And here it is right here. This system monitor is actually new as of Plasma 5.21, and I really like it. It gives you all the detail you could probably want when it comes to the resource usage of your computer. So on the first tab here, we have an overview, gives you the basic details. We have a tab for applications as well. I don't really have much open here. I have Firefox and this system monitor. So this allows you to view the impact that applications are having on your resources. We have a history graph as well. And then we can also view all the individual processes that are running on our system. So as you can see, it's a useful application. But what's interesting is that the previous application that provided this same feature set is still included. And this application right here, it says system monitor up here in the title bar, but it's actually called KSysGuard. And KSysGuard has existed for quite a while, pretty much my entire Linux career. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's a fine application for viewing system resources, but the KDE Plasma developers felt the need to provide us with a newer application. And I like new things, so it works out for me. I'm not really sure if we're going to continue to have both KSysGuard and the system monitor included in future releases of Kubuntu. I would think that they would probably settle on the new application. But we'll see. Now the thing is, there's not really a whole lot to talk about here. With Kubuntu 2104, we get the latest KDE Plasma experience on the latest release of the Ubuntu base. And for some of you, that's exactly what you want. You want the latest Plasma. You want the latest Ubuntu packages. So this might be a great combination for you. For other people, this might seem like a boring release. It's just giving you Plasma and that's it. You could probably apt install the Plasma desktop on Ubuntu's base yourself. And I don't think the result would be all that different from what you're getting here. That's not to say that the Kubuntu developers aren't really doing anything. They're obviously, you know, working hard and they really do seem to enjoy this distribution and take pride in it, but they also keep it simple. And whether or not you enjoy Kubuntu depends on well, if you want it to be kept simple. I think it's a solid Plasma experience. I do recommend it if you want to check out Plasma if you haven't already done so, or if you just want the latest Plasma on the latest Ubuntu base, like I've mentioned, you'll get that in this release. So let me know what you think of Kubuntu 2104 in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.